Good morning, everybody. I'm not going to make you stand up like the previous speaker, but that's okay. <laughs> so when Satoshi wrote his white paper in 2008, essentially what he did was he was democratizing finance, right? Well, the issue with any, any democratic society for it to function perfectly, you need free and fair elections. And people need to trust in those elections. So here lies the problem. Over the last 25 to 40 years, trust in governments running fair and free elections has gone down precipitously. In the 2016 US presidential election, two thirds of all Americans believed that the votes that were cast were not count counted properly. Okay, incredible. We talk about in the elections business, in fact, that the trick in elections is to convince the loser that they lost because losers typically are the ones that contest elections. It's unprecedented that we actually have a winner who's actually contested the election results, which is kind of crazy. And we saw last year that Venezuela and Kenya had unprecedented democr um, democracy crisis where the election results that were presented by the president actually were not the real results, okay? So we need to restore trust in fair and free elections. The answer from most elections officials today to fix this problem is to go back to paper ballots. Okay, and there's a congressional um, bill right now in the US Congress to actually go back to paper ballots. The problem with that is you lose access. You set up more polling places, more paper, and people that are mobile have a difficult time getting there. And in fact, the number one reason in the last two election cycles why people didn't vote in the US was they couldn't make it to the polls. To exacerbate the problem, the technology that's in use in the US today is over 10 years old. The machines that actually count the ballots, the tablets that you actually cast your vote on, are basically 10 to 12 year old laptops and computers, and they're breaking. And they're incredibly susceptible to vulnerabilities. And all of the spy agencies on Monday reported to Congress that nation states are trying to compromise the US elections already in this midterm. Presidential commission in 2014, the Obama hit commission, basically said that the majority of the voting machines in the US are gonna be end of life by the end of this decade. And this is a $10 billion global industry for both private elections, for labor unions, associations, and what have you, and public elections. And that's why we started the company three years ago. There's really two parts of our solution. There's actually three parts. The vast token, I'll explain what that is in a second, rides on something we call the cast iron platform, which provides the elections functionality to actually go run an election. The four characteristics of the token are really the four key criteria that elections officials use to demonstrate end-to-end -end verifiability that the election was run free and fair. It's verifiable, it's accessible, meaning anybody can vote, anywhere, obviously it's incredibly secure, and the results are transparent. We'll talk about our vision in just a second. We're in our private pre-sale phase right now. We just kicked it off really about two weeks ago. Public pre-sale is coming up in about a week and a half. We have an incredible level of commitments at this point. It's a $50 million raise. We're three years old, and to date we have 8.2 million votes cast on our blockchain platform. Nobody in the world's done that yet. We also have current customers in the public sector space in the US that we hope by the end of this year will have run their elections on blockchain, which nobody's done a statutory election on blockchain yet. So we have a ton of traction here. In fact, if you go to, uh, if you live in DC and you're in the military and overseas, you can download an app in DC, you can download an app in Montana, you can download an app for a couple of other states that are customers, and that gives you the ability to vote on our blockchain platform, which the ad, you see the admin console on your left there. We've gotten a lot of press since we've done this two years ago. We believe, as do a lot of other people, the blockchain is the perfect platform to fix online voting problems. We had a vote in uh, an election uh, in the summer, and our vision is that on our blockchain platform, you can have these independent parties verify every vote that comes in in real time. We had an election in the summer with the Radio Hall of Fame, and they had their accounting firm had a node on, their, on our platform, and typically they would certify the results two weeks after the election. They certified the results in 20 minutes. The chairman was incredibly happy. 
Because of our traction, we've been recognized in the crypto world as having um, a lot of um, leadership in terms of uh, some of our competitors that are out there. And this is a high level view of our platform. The other thing we are building is right there in the middle called the proof of vote, which we just trademarked, which we think is pretty cool, a protocol that we are open sourcing. So we are gonna put this out into the public domain. And we thought it was critical that this protocol is in the semantics of elections officials, not crypto people. So this describes end to end the processes operationally and the security and all the blockchain components that go into running an end to end verifiable election. Um, the, from the vast token perspective, it uh, gives you access to the platform and unlocks features as we like to see it. And let me explain that. So all those things that are in the blue there are what you get with a vast token and you need a token per ballot for all the things in the red. The issue that we had, not the issue we had, the challenge we had in coming up with the utility of the token is that we run everything from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where we recorded millions of votes where you just need to put in your email to vote all the way up to the state of Montana where you need to encrypt and decrypt the ballot. You need a mathematical proof that you did that properly. You need to shuffle the ballot so that you pro um, provide anonymity and a bunch of other things. So the way we accomplish the complexity of the elections in terms of how we price it is by the number of tokens based on the level of functionality that you need. From the economics perspective, you buy the tokens for the election, the number of tokens per ballot for the number of voters that you have essentially. And once the, and during the course of the election, those tokens are frozen up. Once the election's done, they're unfrozen. You can use them again. So your marginal cost to run an election goes down and down and down. So your affinity to use our platform and the token to run more elections goes up significantly, which we believe will result in some appreciation. There's a lot of players in the election space and we are holding back some of our elections in reserve to make sure we can incent that community and the ecosystem around us. Part of Roadmap, we have an incredible team. This is my fifth company. I work for SAP running an $80 million business unit. I've sold, started and sold and scaled four companies. We have an incredible management team that has run very large global mobile um, companies. We have a CTO who is one of the inventors of the most advanced biometric device on smartphones in the world. Um, and just some amazing crypto people. Our technical advisors are just as good. Goon Surer, if anybody knows him, he is the guy that essentially found the hack in the Dow two years ago and helped to recover the funds. He's been a big contributor to the technology and the platform. We've got the former chief security officer of PayPal. We have a guy, Peter Haynes, who is Bill Gates' tech advisor, chief security officer and crypto cryptographer of Vodafone. And um, the guy in the bottom was a guy who invented the first online voting platform 14 years ago. Got some great, great advisors. And there's our website if you'd like more information. Thank you.